Hey everybody, it's Nicholas Rogers with the big Timber! <laughs> Coming back at you today with another fun and exciting video where we're doing an experiment on what happens to bullet velocities when you add a suppressor to a modern semi-automatic sporting rifle. And realistically, I don't know. So this is part two of a three-part series. In the first part, we did handguns with the suppressor, and surprisingly, it actually decreased the bullet velocity. So I don't know what's gonna happen with this semi-automatic rifle that I have in front of me. Now, the way that this experiment is going to happen is I have two different types of ammunition. I have some bulk range ammo, which is 62 grain, 223 ammo from LAX. And then I have some really premium shit. I'm talking the good stuff. This is the Federal 69 grain. <laughs> Finish him. Oh yeah. Sierra Match King 223 ammunition. And we are gonna go to the range and I'm gonna shoot 10 rounds of this unsuppressed. And we'll see what the average is with the velocity. And then I will shoot 10 rounds of the Sierra Match King unsuppress, see what the velocities are, add the suppressor, and then shoot 10 more. And then we could do a comparative analysis to see, does adding a suppressor increase or decrease bullet velocities with a semi-automatic rifle? So let's get to the range. First round is down range at 2,592 feet per second. Now, as you watch me shoot my Blackout Defense AR-15, you will hear me having to manually cycle the bolt with my charging handle. That is at no fault to the firearm or the firearm manufacturer. Once I purchased my Dead Air Sierra 5 suppressor and put it on the rifle, I was getting overgassing and my ejection patterns were around 12.30 to one o'clock. And some of the shell casings were bouncing off my Trijicon red dot in front of the ejection port. So I put an adjustable gas block system on this firearm to be able to tune my ejection patterns to that sweet spot around three to four o'clock. And it worked perfectly. But in turn, when I removed the suppressor, there's not enough back pressure now for the rifle to cycle on its own. And that's why you're seeing me having to cycle it myself. All right, that is 10 rounds of the LAX bulk ammo unsuppressed downrange. Let's see the stats. We had an average velocity of 2,576 feet per second with a standard deviation of 25. Next up, we have the 69 grain Sierra Match Kings by Federal. And I wanted to bring these into the equation because these are premium factory loads that should have a much tighter or lower standard deviation than what we saw with the bulk LAX ammo. Okay, that was 10 rounds of unsuppressed Federal Sierra Match King 69 grain ammunition. Sped up the three times speed for the sake of timeliness. So let's have a look at these stats. Looks like we have an average of 2,454 feet per second with a standard deviation of 16.5. Up next, we have the LAX bulk ammo being shot suppressed, and it's gonna be interesting to see if there's a difference from the unsuppressed velocities and standard deviation. Once again, I have sped this up to three times speed for the sake of timeliness. That is 10 rounds down range, so let's have a look at the statistics. Remember, unsuppressed it shot 2,576 feet per second on average, suppressed 2,604. So suppressed is coming in faster. Now standard deviation unsuppressed was 25, but suppressed we have a standard deviation of 46. Last but not least, we have the Federal Sierra Match Kings suppressed. Once again, sped up to three times speed for the sake of timeliness. Very interested to see if this increases in velocity and the standard deviation changes. All right, that is 10 rounds down range suppressed. Now remember, unsuppressed, we had an average velocity of 2,454 feet per second. Wow, and coming in suppressed, we have an average of 2,448, which is slower. Standard deviation unsuppressed was 16, and suppressed is 9.4. All right, so welcome back to the Big Timber Lodge. We're gonna break down the statistics that we just produced at the range. We're gonna start off with the LAX bulk ammunition, which unsuppressed 
shot an average of 2,576 feet per second, and suppressed shot an average of 2,604, meaning we did see an increased velocity with the suppressor of 28 feet per second. Now, we also saw an increase in standard deviation from unsuppressed to suppressed by 28, meaning that suppressed, this had a standard deviation of 46. So realistically, that 28 feet per second velocity increase that we saw falls within the standard deviation. So I cannot say shooting this suppressed actually increased velocity. Why? Math, statistics, and also because let's have a look at the federal Sierra Match Kings, which unsuppressed came in with an average of 2,454 feet per second and suppressed came in with an average of 2,448, meaning suppressed, we lost velocity by six feet per second. But we also did increase or gain better standard deviation going from 16 unsuppressed to nine suppressed. Now, once again, with an increase of six feet per second and a standard deviation of nine, I cannot say that adding a suppressor increased or decreased bullet velocities with this platform. <laughs> so, I mean, what are your thoughts in the bottom? Did you think adding a suppressor was going to increase or decrease the velocities before I started this experiment? I thought before part one with the handguns that adding a suppressor would have increased velocity across the board, but now we're seeing with both the semi-automatic handgun and the semi-automatic rifle that it has done neither realistically on average and all that's left is to try it out on a bolt action hunting rifle so make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because in part three i will be doing just that we will be testing out a hunting bolt action rifle to see if a suppressor increases or decreases velocities when attached all right until next time peace